homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen or welcome back. Today I am making an orange sauce and this is an orange sauce that you could use on chicken or salmon or even on vegetables. And I got the idea from this from becoming a farm girl. Cassandra is a YouTuber that I follow. I love her stuff. And she has a newsletter that she runs. And so she did a short video on this along with a whole bunch of other things. And then this recipe was in her newsletter. And she mentioned where she got it from. And so I Googled that. The directions on it were not great. They were a little bit unclear in terms of volume and how exactly it went together. And it was mentioned in the place that she got it from that it was originally based on a recipe in the blue book for a plum sauce. And so the idea for this is that it's basically kind of an Asian sauce. It has ginger and garlic and onions in it. And I thought that just sounded delicious and I loved the idea of having this on my shelf and being able to put it in an instant pot with a chicken and poach some chicken in it or putting a little cornstarch in it and tossing it and putting it on a stir fry. Um, so that was my idea for this. But I was a little unsure of the actual safety because there were some kind of little bit of confusing directions in terms of volumes. And whenever you're converting a recipe that's a tested recipe to something that isn't tested, you have to really kind of go down the rabbit hole and make sure that what you're doing is not gonna end up compromising the safety of the product. It turns out, interestingly, that plums are actually more acidic than orange juice is, or that oranges are. And that totally surprised me. And so I ended up testing the pH of this sauce just to be on the safe side. The rule of thumb with canning is it needs to be under 4.6 and my interactions with the various processing authorities that I deal with because I also sell some things that are canned is they really prefer it to be below 3.8. So 4.6 is the absolute cutoff but 3.8 is like a lot of extra wiggle room in terms of safety. And then the other thing I was concerned about is making sure I wasn't radically changing the density of the sauce that was the original plum sauce. Uh, it was it was okay if it was more watery, but I didn't want it to be less watery. So anytime you're increasing the thickness of a product, that's going to change how the heat penetrates to the center of that jar and creates the safety that you're looking for. And so you have to be careful that you're not drastically changing the density as well. It all worked out fine. And I will post in the description the actual recipe that I made here. One of the things about the recipes that I was looking at was it mentioned starting with four pounds of oranges, but then there was a lot of strange directions in terms of separating the zest and then like boiling the oranges once the zest was off and then removing the pulp, but it wasn't really clear if you were keeping the segment, the sections intact or whether you were just taking the pulp out, in which case there are better ways to do that than boiling the orange. That was a very strange direction. And then it started with four pounds and then it mentioned three cups of juice or, or segments. And so it was very unclear what the volumes were. When Cassandra did it, she just juiced the oranges, which made a whole lot more sense to me. And so that's what I ended up doing. But when I was buying these at the grocery store, I wasn't sure how much volume I was actually gonna need. So I bought four pounds of oranges, but then I also, as a backup, just bought a container of orange juice concentrate because I figured um, one of the directions was to add water to this whole mixture and then boil it down for an hour, obviously to reduce it. And that seemed kind of strange to me and weird. Why wouldn't you just start with the juice that you had instead of adding water and then boiling it back off again? And so I just used orange juice concentrate because it's already concentrated. And so I basically reduced the amount of time that I needed to cook it quite a bit. Anyway, it came out great. I put it over some salmon. I had a little bit left over that didn't quite fit into a jar. And so I marinated some salmon in that and then threw that on the grill and it was really delicious. So I think this is a keeper, but I wanted to kind of talk about what I went through to make sure that this is a safe recipe because you can't really play that kind of stuff fast and loose. You have to have a little bit of a knowledge base in order to know where you can adapt a recipe and where you can't. But yeah, Asian orange sauce for chicken, for fish, for vegetables, great to have on the pantry shelves for a quick weeknight dinner. Let's get started. So this is a little over four pounds of Cara Cara oranges. They were on sale and thought I'd give them a try. They have a little more of a pink color. This is my zester. And if you don't have one of these plain zesters, I highly, highly recommend them. They are really fabulous. Definitely the only way I zest citrus. So here's all our zested fruit. 
And citrus is a winter crop, not a summer crop. And so the best time to make this would be in the winter. It's currently April and we're kind of right at the end of citrus season. Anything you get in the summer months is either going to have come from chili or it's going to have been in cold storage for a very long time. So citrus is best in this winter time. And then I don't have a typical citrus reamer. And so I'm going to cut these in half and then again so they're in quarters and just put them through my regular like lemon and lime squeezer. These are really gorgeous. So this is my citrus squeezer and this is working quite well. A little tedious because of the quartering, but not a bad deal. And I had no idea how much juice I was actually going to get out of these fruits. Ideally, I would have used Valencia oranges, but those are virtually impossible to find in my area. So here's all our finished juice and pulp. And I ended up with about one and two thirds cups of orange juice from a little over four pounds of oranges. So not super great. And I'm straining this, it's not really necessary, but um, just in case there's some really tiny seeds or something in there, I'm just giving that a good strain and straining out the pulp. And then I'm gonna add to this one small onion and I decided to use a red onion partly because these are my own red onions that I grew last year that are still in storage. And also because I thought the color would lend itself beautifully to that car car orange which had a little bit of a pink color to it. I'm really finely dicing this because I'm gonna blend it later. And so I wanted this to be as fine as I could get it. And this worked out to be about one cup of onion, which was just about where I wanted to be. So I'm adding in my orange zest. This is a 12 ounce can of orange juice concentrate because I knew that one and two thirds cups of juice was not gonna be enough for this recipe adding in my cup of onion. And then this is a puck of mixed ginger and garlic, so about a tablespoon of each of those. A tablespoon of red chili flake, a little bit of salt. A cup of apple cider vinegar, and you could use any vinegar you wanted as long as it was 5%. And then I'm adding a cup of brown sugar here. I drastically reduced the sugar that was in this recipe. I think the original recipe was uh, a couple of cups of white sugar, a cup of brown sugar, and a half a cup of honey. And I just didn't want that much sweetener in there. Sugar is generally not a preservative in these kinds of recipes. It's there for flavor and it's the pH that's actually preserving the product. And so I felt very comfortable reducing the sugar quite a bit. So giving that a good stick blend and then here I am testing the pH. It worked out to be 3.7, which is right where I wanted it to be. So that was perfect. And then bringing everything back up to a boil and putting these in my canning jars. And the original recipe said that it made four pints. So I ended up with about two pints here or four cups. I'm way below what the original recipe called for, but the measurement stuff on the original recipes was so confusing that I have no idea. But I know my pH is where I want it to be. I know that it's less thick than it would have been because I added a lot less sugar. So I felt very confident that this was the way to go. I thought I'd use one cup jars instead of pint jars just because I didn't need that much sauce at once. I'm doing a half an inch headspace, which is what the original recipe in the ball canning book called for. And this handy little tool helps measure that. Giving my rims a good wipe and then putting on my caps and putting it into my water bath canner. Spices in a recipe like this are fairly interchangeable. And the original recipe that I was working off of called for Thai chili paste. I didn't wanna add that because I didn't wanna pigeonhole myself into a Thai category with this. And I could always add that later.
Here's what the extra got used for as a marinade for salmon, which was absolutely delicious. And then I'm processing this in a boiling water canner for 20 minutes, which is what the original recipe called for. And there you have it. Beautiful Asian orange sauce that can be used on chicken or fish or pork or what have you. Um, definitely give this recipe a try. Tribe, I think it's a good one. Thanks for watching, Tribe. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. I have new content coming out every week.